Hello and welcome to our DIKT Expert Talk. Today we're going to talk with Kyle Bollos and he's our communications expert in Zurich, Switzerland. Kyle, hello. Hello there. How should managers now in these COVID-19 crisis times work with their teams in virtual ways? What is the most important thing they should think about? Well, there's quite a few things to think about, but I think looking at a most important thing is at the moment, staying fit and healthy. It's something which if your body isn't fit and healthy, then it doesn't matter how good the mind is, everything's going to fall apart or go downhill from there. And it's quite hard at the moment keeping up with sports activities. People have lost the routine with gyms being closed. But I go out in the forest on my bike and I think other people could get out and walk. It's getting some fresh air, doing something at home, finding some way to be able to at least keep the body healthy and well. And getting some routine to that is, is another thing I would say is important because we've lost a lot of the routine at the moment. And a routine that needs to be structured could begin with a bit of good hard exercise at the start of the day. I'm a great believer in that. So that's for each and every individual. But seen as a manager um, caring for his team, how many times should he try to communicate with them? Again, this is another important issue because there are people who are being told, oh, yeah, let's work from home. We've got the technology. It's been in the companies for years. But what I've been finding this week is how little practice some people have with it. I've just come from a session with 14 participants. I was an outside person. And some of the people there were doing things with the technology which showed you they'd not really used it. I mean, backgrounds that were maybe dresses and a wardrobe full of various uh, personal stuff is not really quite the sort of thing to show uh, on, on a session like that, or people not knowing how to use the mic. So just a general setup. There's been a lot of learning for a lot of people this week. And I think to assume as a manager that your employees have all that training, we haven't really got it. And therefore, it's good to keep in touch with people, ask them what they need as help, and to provide those resources to them. So you are now very experienced with webinars, virtual conferences, and so on. So in your experience, are our top-level uh, executives and board members are they prepared enough to work really online, to work in virtual teams and to work from home? Again, I think that's a bit of a mixed answer. There are clearly some who are great experts in it and have a lot of practice, but that's not true for most of us. And we're answering the question for most of us. And I think there it's a case of looking at who has got the practice, who hasn't got the practice. And if they haven't got it, then provide some help to them. And board members need to be checking in their companies what is needed. It's a top-down thing. Just assuming because we've got the system set up that everybody's happy working with it, that's really not the case. And again, to mention another company I was at this week, there they have... Teams are set up, which is one of the many platforms. But some of the employees are just not used to working with it. And we have two team events set up for Monday of next week, which HR is joining me on because they need to see that everybody is able to work with this because they want to use that more in their company. So my little group is partly as a test group that's there. But they've had MS Teams for quite some time. And I think that's another thing that employees... Some of us are using Teams, some of us are using Skype, some of us are using Zoom. There's a multiplicity of platforms there, and they've all got their own little quirks. So now we talked about the communication between managers and their teams, but being more specific on communication managers, how can they prepare for like crisis management in terms of communications? What is their skill to do right now? You mentioned crisis there, Nikolai. Um, I prefer not to look at crisis. I, I, I'm going back. This is probably quite a few years back now. but <laughs> And I look at something like that, and I think if we're calling it a crisis, we might start pulling our hair out a bit and overreacting 
in some ways. Yes, of course, there's some challenges, but we seem to be coping quite well at the moment. Society hasn't stopped working. We just need to be able to find and practice and keep that sort of stuff going and keep our spirits up. That's extremely important to do at the moment. So I prefer not to use a word like crisis and just be able to get on and manage it. For managers, that also means that they need to be pretty understanding of their employees. Some people really do have fear at the moment. And if you're a manager and you connect with those employees, discuss what those fears are. How can you help? Listen to them, be empathetic. It's really a time for managers to step up and get fully involved in their businesses and really give us some good leadership that will also inspire us and keep us strong at this time. Isn't this challenging uh, situation now not even a chance to make maybe the team, team spirit grow? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think that's... That's a good question because there are some managers who are just not up to the, the challenge that the technology, but it's a challenge, it's an opportunity that this technology that we have gives us. And those managers need to be able to find out where the people are in their team that maybe have got the best skills. Some people may be not using the systems in company very much, but they maybe have used them privately or in other groups. And those skills, if the company manager asks who's got them, can then be brought out. So I think, yeah, that's a very good point there about bringing out the team aspect of working together. We've got a problem. Let's try and work it out. So some of the managers probably face the situation that they have to tell their employees that they have to let them go because the economical situation of the company is really getting, getting very, very bad. And um, how is a good way to prepare the employees for such a hard um, um, measurement? I don't have a really easy answer for that because I think there with the, the distance, if you like, that we have with the technology, it's great to meet people face to face and to be able to communicate something like that just over a video screen. No, it really does require some extra skills there. I think video is great. We do need to get away from it sometimes. That's why I also encourage people to use the telephone um, and post and other channels of communication that can reach out and touch people. But to be able to tell somebody there that what you've just described, that they've lost their job because of these conditions, challenges that we've currently got, that really is, is a tough feat. Um, it's going to bring out the best in some. Um, for the people on the receiving end though, yeah, managers have got to be able to find out, for example, what government guidelines are, what government support there is, and to be able to inform whatever is available to tell their employees that as quickly as possible. Just for the company to be making a decision and the manager to be communicating a company action really is not enough. There are There is support available around. Managers need to make it their job to find out what's there and to keep, keep completely up to date with the news on that, that they can then tell their employees and say that whatever might not be answered this afternoon, they'll be in touch with them the next day or the day after to keep them updated with what's available to help. Would you recommend giving bad messages via email, via phone call or on a when you can see it on a, on a video conference. And that brings in questions about email. And email is something that's so easy to hide behind, isn't it? Yeah. And giving some bad news because you don't want to confront somebody with it. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I think that just makes it a lot worse. Um, you can feel emotions down a telephone. You can perhaps see them in the faces of people. And it really needs to be some extra personal touch and you show empathy, you show that you are on that person's side. Email, nah. I mean, I've seen plenty of cases where companies have fired people by text message. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really not into that. That's, that's not a way, that's not a good communication tool to use. Those companies, in my opinion, won't have great futures if that's the way they treat their own employees, then what attitude do they have towards customers? They don't deserve 
to continue. And this world that we're getting in at the moment is going to shake out the best ones. Okay. So um, let's be hopeful that the lockdown won't be too long. Let's use the time to read, to make phone calls and write postcards and to listen to Supertramp maybe again after you some of the old records that you haven't heard for a long time and do some positive stuff keep it positive it, it, it's really it's not about talking positive that's that's no that's not it it's about doing positive things that you really do enjoy and because that's going to be able to be spread around with other people and that's what's going to keep us going through this that's a great call to action thank you very much kyle it was a pleasure talking to you and hope to talk to you soon all the best for you Keep safe. Yeah. Thanks bye, bye. bye bye. Bye bye, Nicola. Bye. Bye, everyone.